so i know i'm 5 minutes early but i just wanted to uh, check how it was all coming out and stuff uh i think i'll be starting in 5 minutes but till then i just wanted to get a feel of how the live thing goes please excuse the background noises because i have a fan running uh because i really needed it because obviously it's summers and it's just very irritating anyway <clears throat> also excuse the noises my cats are going to make because i have six of them playing around and like three or four of them just absolutely love hanging out in the hall so please just bear with me you know <sighs> let's see <clears throat> not sure if i can see how many people are online here yet because i'm going like to my map and not my phone so i'm really not sure uh how it's going to go yet okay so it's 11 now let's begin i'm not sure if people are here yet I've... please just keep on commenting as you come or if you have any questions please just comment them uh in the comment screen so let's do this i'll just go through the notes again i'm just waiting for people to check in which we do it I'm not able to see how many people have logged in or not. Is it normal? I'm not getting so much. Okay, well, I'm receiving messages from people. How can they connect with the webinar?
if you just give me two minutes, I'm gonna go to my uh, page and post the link. Apparently, a lot of people are not able to get where they can uh, join the webinar. Uh, I thought everybody was gonna receive the notification. Actually, Facebook works kind of five minutes uh, behind, so uh, it's actually a pain like that. <clears throat> Let me just see. I am sorry, a lot of people are not able to get how to join the just copy the link to oh my god. Uh, let's see. Not able to log in. Taking them out. Okay. Okay, I've figured out the link, so let me just post it once and then. Let's see if people are able to find the webinar. I'm going to put my phone on silent now so I don't think I will be able to reply to the queries right now unless my husband comes in and he does that. Maybe starting. Okay, so I think eight people have joined. More are yet to come. A lot of people are not able to figure out how to attend, like how to join in the webinar or whatever. So, okay, let's just see. Let's just give them some time. And, uh, okay. Okay, so let's begin. Hi guys, my name is Hina Pardeshi and uh, I am a writer, a manuscript critic and an editor-in-chief at a local publishing house, Citrus Publishers. I work for Citrus Publishers uh, on a part-time basis, so basically I'm a full-time writer and uh, I also undertake projects of editing and manuscript critique freelance. So that's what I do professionally. In my free time, I am a blogger. I am a lifelong blogger. I actually started my writing career with a blog. So 
blogging is something very important to me so in my free time i so in my free time i blog uh mostly about uh i don't know book reviews i have started recently vlogging as well or uh, reading vlogs that is and uh, stuff like that i create videos for youtube and igtv channels and uh, i've started to col uh, collab uh, to collaborate with brands uh, very recently and publishers and for the books etc for my videos that's a good source of income so you must try it if you have a thing for it okay so i heartily welcome all of you to my webinar i i'm thrilled to have you all though i'm sure a lot of people are still uh, yet to come but we have to begin right so okay let's start with the webinar so basically when i said i'm a writer i'm actually a published author i have two books published yet which i'll be very happy to show you the first one is deceived deceived is actually my debut novel i made my debut with deceived with citrus publishers and it's a traditionally published book and uh, it is a crime thriller psychological thriller to be exact uh that's mostly the kind of writings i do it is also available in the form of ebook so in case if you are good morning so in case if you are interested you can always go to amazon and as right now lockdown is going on you can pick up the kindle copy of the book this is the physical copy and that's the kindle ebook so this is the first book of mine and this is the second book this is actually a collaboration project <clears throat> i think uh, it has stories of more than 30 authors or 30 authors to be exact and uh, mine is one of the stories that was uh, published in this uh, my story is titled my room it is a non fiction book and it was pretty hard for me to write because it is of a uh, personal experience that i've shared here i generally try to stay away from non fiction writing because well there are a lot of things that i do not want to i don't know share but it's a part and parcel of a writer's life so this is my second book i was a part of this anthology so this is like these are my babies now i would like to thank you all again for joining in the webinar i'm sure okay now i can see uh, more people have joined in so i welcome you all to my webinar thanks a lot for attending it thanks a lot for taking out the time i really hope that you guys are safe and that your families as well as your relatives and friends are safe and uh secure at home and that you guys are not having a lot of hard time in this lockdown we all are hoping and praying that the lockdown ends soon and i hope it does especially in maharashtra because we've now come in the red zone so let's see okay now let's begin with the webinar So first of all I'm going to list out the things that we will be talking about today. Uh I have my notes here with me. At the end of the webinar I will be sharing a Google Drive link to these notes. Uh so you can download them from there. But if you are like me and if you prefer to have your own notes with you Okay yes that's the thing i just posted it okay yeah, i've i've just received a comment that a lot of people are not able to find it so yes i've uh, just shared the link to the webinar to the live session here 
but the problem is I cannot do both otherwise I'll be missing out on the time of the webinar and as you can see already a lot of people are already logged in I'll give them enough time to log in I will repeat a few things later on for them because I'm pretty sure they'll figure out eventually how to come here okay so let's begin anyway so the topics that we are going to discuss today for this webinar are first of all we are going to talk about creative writing the first thing that we are going to do is understand what creative writing is now there are a lot of people writers even who do not get the concept of creative writing you know because they think creative writing and fiction writing are something different and non-fiction writing is that another and altogether very different thing but that's not the case fiction writing and non-fiction writing are a part of creative writing and I will be telling you what creative writing is what all it entails and what kinds of writings are basically are categories of uh, creative writing so we are going to get the term creative writing out of our way we are going to understand it we are going to learn it so that we are no more intimidated by it and we are clear about what we are doing right so that's the first thing that we are going to do the second thing that we are going to do is discuss the literary devices in creative writing now I have attended a lot of seminars and webinars and workshops on writing and I always feel that people do not talk about literary devices something that is kind of the heart of creative writing either because they think it's not important or they think that it just doesn't need that kind of attention but what I really feel about literary devices is that people fear literary devices you want to know why because we were taught literary devices in our schools right so our brain kind of connects literary devices even though uh, we were taught only like three or four literary devices for poems and composition and whatever you know English composition so our brain kind of connects it to the time to the academic time that we really don't want to think about or look back at uh, so what happens is we are instantly averted to the idea of learning about creative devices uh, sorry literary devices and creative writing right so we are going to talk about uh, the literary devices and I'm gonna make you see literary devices in a very different light so that you all can relate to them in a very different manner and your brain is no longer averted to the idea of them because if you do not have your literary devices prepared there's no saving guys because if you want to be a good writer you need to know literary devices and there are so many parts to it again let me tell you writing is not just something that a person sits on a laptop and does writing is a lot more than that writing takes a lot of time and effort and writing is in itself a very big field you know so this is the first thing that we all need to acknowledge okay moving on I'm sorry I have a tendency of talking a lot so just let me know if I'm talking a lot and we'll move right on okay and another thing I'd really appreciate a bit more likes and hearts because it's really encouraging and I feel like people are actually watching me and you know because it's kind of difficult to see people here so anyway then I'm going to share a couple of terminologies with you that as would-be writers you need to know because these terminologies are a breaking point for a lot of writers because they feel intimidated by ah oh, thank you so much I really like it I can see an angry emoji as well I have no idea why but I hope I'm not angering anyone anyway so creative writing terminologies these terminologies you really need to know because uh, let me know if you guys are comfortable with all English otherwise I can do it in Hindi and English as well I don't have any problems languages never sh should never be a barrier right 
So we are gonna go and look into writing terminologies like editing, kinds of editings, then the things that we writers like to use, uh, the words that we writers use generally so that you guys feel that you are in on the writing thing, right? Because this intimidation around things is what makes a lot of writers quit too early, you know, and we do not want that happening because if you are here, it is my job to make sure that you do not quit. That is, if you really want to write. If you want to write, I'm there with you through and through. And I'm not going to let you quit. So, let's be clear on that. Then we'll come to the main point of getting started. How to get started in writing. I will tell you from the very start, like, just consider if you're not writing anything right now, I've never written a word, I will tell you how to get started. So that's what we're going to do. After that, we're going to talk about how to improve your writing because once you've started writing, the second step that comes is how to improve your writing because improving is the whole point, guys. You cannot just learn writing and then be stagnant. You have to grow as a writer. You have to do so many good things things guys because if you've taken this first plunge into the world of writing by deciding to attend this webinar you have already accepted and told your mind and people around you that you have a desire to be a writer and trust me that's enough of that's actually enough to be a writer you know that is if you're ready to put the time in then I have some creative writing exercises for you. Then I also have some creative writing prompts for you that will help you get started and help your creativity go like crazy, you know. Then I'll be telling you what to do next. Okay, so let's get started. I would like to begin this webinar with some beautiful, beautiful lines by Sylvia Plath. They're actually from her journal and uh, personally speaking, these are the lines that, that I had tagged above, like on the wall above my desktop because when I started writing, I started it on a desktop in 2014 and I had these lines there written on a simple piece of paper and they are the only lines that carried me through all the doubts, all the negativity and all the self-doubt especially so i'd like to share these lines with you and i would suggest that if you are really serious about your writing you should get these lines you'll be getting these notes so you should get these lines framed like just write them down uh, with a paper on a paper with a pen and then just put it in front of you where you sit for writing so that you don't feel alone right so the lines go like this and by the way everything in life is writable about if you have the outgoing guts to do it and the imagination to improvise the worst enemy to creativity is self-doubt sylvia plath the unabridged journals of sylvia plath now you get it the biggest enemy to creativity is self-doubt. You yourself are your biggest enemy. If you, if you want to write, the first thing that you need to conquer is you yourself, your own mind and your own outlook towards you, what you are doing. Okay, so let's begin. Creative writing. So what does the term creative writing mean? So, uh, okay, I'm not going to read the comments right now because it's just kind of distracting me right now. Thanks a lot, as my brother, replying to everyone. Okay, so, so let's go. Creative writing is basically very easy to explain but 
I would first like to tell you guys how Wikipedia describes it because as is the case mostly in life we generally tend to go to Wikipedia for each and everything. So I'll let you know right here what Wikipedia says about creative writing. Creative writing is any writing that goes outside the bounds of normal professional, journalistic, academic or technical forms of literature, typically identified by an emphasis on narrative craft, character development and the use of literary tropes or with various traditions of poetry and poetics. Now, this is how Wikipedia describes it and this is what makes it difficult for people to understand what the hell creative writing is. You know, in very simple terms now, I will explain you what creative writing is. Creative writing is basically any writing, any writing that has creativity at its forefront. What does that mean? That simply means any writing that comes out of your imagination, emotions, feelings, experiences, etc. is called creative writing. I hope that sank in because that is how that is how easy it is to describe creative writing. Creative writing is simply the writing that you do based on your imagination, emotions, feelings, experiences and emotions. It's like an emotional writing guys. <laughs> so that's what creative writing is. Now, even though creative writing sounds too easy, it is not. There's always a catch, right? So the thing is, <clears throat> even though creative writing looks like a very creative centric writing, there are a lot of rules and trust me, there are a lot. There are a lot of rules that govern creative writing, which a writer needs to like needs to learn because many times while writing, you'll have to break those rules. But in order to break them, you'll have to first learn them, right? Yes. So we are going to learn all the rules of creative writing, then we are going to write and then we are going to make it better. That's all as writers we can do. Publishing, not publishing is all in the hands of gods and your luck and stuff. But the thing that we as writers can make sure is that we write and that we write good. Okay. So that's creative writing. Again, creative writing is writing that has creativity at the forefront. It shows your creativity, it shows your imagination, it shows your feelings, it shows, it shows your emotions, it shows your experiences. That's all creative writing is. If tomorrow I go to say Mahabaleshwar for visiting, then sure, I can write about it. I can write my experience, how I felt. How I didn't like it, if I didn't, how I liked it, if I did, and that would be creative writing. It's as simple as that. Okay, so now <clears throat> let's move on to the second thing. Forms of creative writing. So basically, when I say creative writing, what actually pops up in your head? <clears throat> A novel. Okay, that was a bit curious, but yes. A novel? Yes. This novel is a work of creative writing. But what else? Is it only a novel or only an anthology collection or only a novella or novelette? <clears throat> That's right. There are a lot of forms of creative writing and I'm just going to read the list to you so that you know what all are the forms of creative writing. Creative writing can mainly be divided into two categories. 
fiction creative writing and non-fiction creative writing. Now, if you are here, I'm thinking, I'm assuming that you all know what fiction and non-fiction is, but just in case, I'm not really sure how much you guys already know and how much you don't, because here are some people who are already writing books and are stuck somewhere midway. And there are some people who have not yet begun. So I'm just gonna tell you in a line. Fiction is imaginary. It can be inspired by real events. That's not a problem. But fiction is imaginary. Non-fiction is not. Non-fiction is the real thing, like based on the real things, right? But if you take a real event and put it as it is, then that is non-fiction. But if you take a real event and tweak it, use your imagination to change it, change names and, you know, add some bits, remove some bits, then it becomes fiction. Easy. Okay. So all the forms, like most of the forms of creative writing are, and I'm going to, uh, while I'm at it, I'm going to list all the fiction as well as non-fiction creative writing forms okay so novel writing novella writing short story writing script or screen writing poetry writing flash fiction writing micro fiction writing autobiographical writing biographical writing memoir writing letter writing essay writing, web writing, blog writing, song writing, play writing, speech writing, article writing, diary writing, journal writing, vignette writing. All these are forms of creative writing. So if you're already doing anything out of these, even if you're just posting blog posts, it is a form of creative writing. So you're already doing creative. It was very important because people need to know, right? If, if you don't know what are the forms of creative writing, how can you even call it creative writing? Then? So you need to know. That's why I had to tell you. Okay. Now the forms I specialize in are fiction creative writing, especially novels, novellas, short stories, anthology, and even blog writing, journal writing, web writing. These are the forms that I specialize in and I'm going to tell you in-depth things about in these forms. Okay, so moving on. If you guys want, you can just grab a paper and a pen and just write down mota mota whatever I'm just saying because... <clears throat> As a student myself, I love doing it, but most of the time people don't like it. I'm anyway going to provide you the notes, all the notes, so you will have each and everything in them, so you don't have to worry. But still, if you want to write, you can write. It doesn't matter. Now we are going to talk about literary devices in creative writing. <clears throat> in creative, specifically in creative Okay, so let's have a look. Your dictionary, which is an online open dictionary source, describes literary devices as a technique a writer uses to produce a special effect in their writing. Now, that's a very short definition of literary devices. I have come up with a literary devices definition and I would like to read that out to you because it's a bit long so please just pay attention. <clears throat> Don't try to note it down. It's already provided in the notes. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry. Yes, social media post writing is also a form of creative writing. Right on. <clears throat> Literary devices are the techniques a writer uses in order to create a unique and 
powerful yet appropriate effect in their writing to help them influence the, the reader's imagination while at the same time helping the reader to understand the writing effectively and on a much deeper level. It adds multiple layers of sense, feelings and emotions to the reader's imagination and helps the writer in gripping the reader's conception of their work in a very effective way. That's my definition of literary devices. It needed so many words because literary devices are very important guys. You guys need to know them. Now literary devices can be further. I have actually done a blog post on it on my blog crazycatwriter.com but uh, I'm not sure if you guys have seen it or not so I'm just gonna <clears throat> run uh, by it quickly before we get on to the part where we start writing. So literary elements. <clears throat> literary devices can be divided into two categories, literary elements and literary techniques. Now, what are literary elements? Now, I'm talking about mostly fiction writing, but this also applies to nonfiction writing because nonfiction writing also has a very uh, unique and elaborate structure of how it is done, uh, which we will eventually learn but not right now. So <clears throat> it would do you good to learn these literary elements and the, these literary techniques, even if you are a nonfiction writer. Okay, so literary elements are the elements used by a writer in the overall scheme of things. Some of the main literary elements are antagonist. Antagonist is the hero or the heroine of your novel, the main character that is. Characters, characters, guys, are the backbone of any fiction, of, uh, of any creative writing, actually. If you have a character in your creative writing, whether it's fiction or non-fiction, it has to be good. It has to be realistic. It has to be very strong. It has to be relatable, guys, because if your characters are not relatable, your books are not going to get any kind of appreciation you know it's just kind of one of those things i'm sorry i have a back problem so <clears throat> anyway so characters third literary element is conflict conflict is basically uh the struggle between opposing fo uh, forces usually the main character struggles against some okay anyway conflict is Another term that you need to make yourself acquainted with. Conflict is the heart of the story. What is the conflict of the story? What is that one conflict, the one problem that your story revolves around? Right? You need to have a conflict. Now, there are two kinds of conflicts. It's not in the notes, so you can note it down. There are two kinds of conflicts. One is the overall conflict of the story and the second one is the inner conflict of the characters in order to make your characters more realistic more relatable and more powerful you need to have several inner conflicts okay now i'm going to talk more about when i am taking novel writing webinar or seminars uh, but for now it will do good for you to remember these things <clears throat> The next literary element is dialogue. Art in itself. Actually, you know. Then there is mood, the overall mood of the story. Moral. If your story has a moral, then moral. Narrative. Narrative is again like the backbone. It has to be, you know, because narration is what drives the story from one point to another so you need to have a very strong narration and narration is actually your writing voice your writing style so when you work on your writings you are actually working on your narrative style you know and that is the most important part of writing because by honing your writing skills you are actually making your prose your narrative better the next literary element is <clears throat> plot. 
plot is everything guys especially if you're writing novel then point of views there are three point of view see i can just go and go on because there are like three kinds of point of views and then like there's so many things so right now i'm just gonna stick to the names otherwise because it's already been 40 minutes and i think i'm just anyway gonna like see by one and a half hours or something but who cares okay right we are here to learn writing and we are gonna do it no matter what <clears throat> point of views protagonist sorry i'm sorry i made a mistake antagonist is actually the villain of your story protagonist is actually the hero of your story now hero or heroine whatever you know antagonist can also be hero like villain or villainess so that is there then settings where is your story set where is your write-up set you need to have a setting structure structure is again a very big topic and will need at least two to three classes to cover them so i'm not going to get into the details of structure theme what is the central theme of your story or your write-up you need to know them then comes literary techniques <clears throat> I'm just going to read through the names because these are mostly the things that won't come in handy to you right away, but you will be needing them at a later point in your writing, right? Especially if you're writing poetry, guys, or songs or lyrics or whatever, you know. Sorry, my cats are just going crazy here. Okay, so I'm just going to go through the names of literary techniques. Allegory, alliteration, allusion, anachronism, analogy, antithesis, colloquialism, consonance, diction, epigraph, euphorism, flashbacks, foreshadowing, which I use a lot in my writings, hyperbole, irony, again something that I use a lot, imagery, again. Implied metaphors, juxtaposition, all these things are inevitable when you're writing long form fiction. Malapropism, metaphor, metonym, onomatopoeia, oration, oxymorons, paradox, personification, repetition, similes, soliloquy, symbolism, etc. Now, there are so many that I can actually go on and on and on. But I really do not want to intimidate you. But the thing is, these terms, these terminologies are very important. That's why I've included them in my notes. And as you can see, all these literary techniques are actually defined in the notes, you know. So you can keep them as handy references for yourself, print them out and keep them with you. Because you'll need them at some or the other point, but not initially. Let me assure you, you won't need them initially, but you need to know in the end what they are if you want to call yourself a writer. Okay, moving on. Now we have come to the most important and the most exciting part about writing where we are going to discuss some terminologies before diving headfirst into how you can start writing. I hope by now everyone has come and everyone's figured out how to join the webinar. I will be doing a better job next time. I might be using Skype. I wasn't even sure I should have used Facebook Live, but it's just accessible to a lot of people, Facebook, right? So I didn't want to get into Skype. Uh, but I generally have sessions with my doctors and students and colleagues. Uh, through Skype and it actually works better. So let's see how this goes. Then we'll decide Important fiction writing terminologies now. I'm just gonna Again run through the names and show you because see I have described each and everything for you so you can totally 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 And you will have each and everything defined for you, right? <clears throat> As a writer, the terms you need to acquaint yourself again with are editing, types of editing, that is copy editing, line editing, mechanical editing, substantive editing, developmental editing, 
proof what a proof is then proof reading right proof reading revising alpha reader beta reader what is novel or manuscript t something that i do so you need to pay attention to this one right then what is a manuscript what is a novel now for your benefit i really um, wanted to share a what like show you the difference between a manuscript and a book so just give me one second my manuscript is actually lying around here only because i've been working on it day and night from last 5 years so my manuscript is here show you quickly how a manuscript looks and uh, how a book looks so uh, just be ready to see a lot of different colored pages because i actually ran out of pages in between this is the manuscript of sinister town as you can see the name uh, i have already written this much so this is a manuscript and uh, this is a book right so what is the difference manuscript is before editing proofreading or anything done by the publisher is done to a book that is a manuscript when the manuscript is polished edited proofread copy edited then again proofread then the author's proof is final then they publish it after the arcs what you get is a book okay see a lot of people guys stick around you're going to miss out on the most important part of writing about how you can actually get started in writing you know anyway not my loss so ah uh, one second just give me a second there's so many things to handle <laughs> right so that was that anyway now i'm going to continue with what i was doing before that is the terminology now i'd like to go one line detail in one line detail of novel what is a novel a novel is a full length book of at least 250 pages that is around 30000 to 50000 words what is a novella books under 100 pages that is under 30000 words anthology short story collection by the authors short story collection stories okay what is a short story short story is a story under 10000 to 15000 words what is a short short or a shorty it is a story under 5000 words flash fiction fiction under 1500 or 1000 words micro fiction fiction under 300 words that is a thing and a lot of people do it and it is real epistolary fiction what are plotters what are pantsters what are plansters you know and stuff like that then you have my blog links here you can click on them and read the articles for yourself now comes the main part i hope people are here now because this is what we are here to do how to get started now you want to be a writer right so how are you going to start writing mm, that's the tricky question okay i'm going to answer the questions later on sorry yeah tips on getting started first thing that i advise anyone who asks me how they can start writing is read 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 if you do not read you cannot be a writer simple as that you have to read in order to become a writer you cannot just expect to be a 
writer without reading books i know there are a lot of people who claim that they are writers but they don't read what should they read now the thing is i hate those people they are nothing they are totally full of crap because you cannot become a writer unless you read books right you need to understand and by books i do not mean thrillers or mystery books or romance novels or anything no the thing is if you are writing say memoir if you are into memoir writing then you have to read other people's memoir in order to understand how memoirs go what is the structure of a memoir you can learn them separately that is right but the thing is you have to be an intuitive writer you just don't want to be a learned writer an intuitive writer is a writer who can write by intuition right i am a very strong intuitive writer i had it in me and when i started writing i just kind of poured out stories you know so that is the kind of writer you want to be you can write anywhere on anything right so you have to be an intuitive writer and in order to become an intuitive writer you have you have to have to have to read books read any kind of books whatever interests you whatever you like whatever genres you like you can read autobiographies you can read books by indian authors you can read mythology don't uh, get <clears throat> nervous or irritated or uh, put down by people who judge your reading style reading genres and stuff because people do that people tend to do that people do a lot of things that they shouldn't but they do anyway do not let them discourage you you just keep on reading what you like reading will help your subconscious and unconscious minds to pick on the details that are very hard to learn you're getting me the thing is the more you read the better writer you are going to be so read my first advice is read read you can pick up so that that was you have to <clears throat> you like to quote the best writer on it writer this earth is ever gonna get Stephen King and he's also my writing idol so I'm gonna quote him here if you don't have time to read you don't have the time or the tools to write simple as that now you get it why reading is important okay anyway first thing is start reading If you want help, you can always DM me. You can start slow. Start reading by one book if you are not used to reading. No one's asking you to read a hundred books a year. <clears throat> But you need to start reading if you already don't do well. If you already do, then just keep on reading. Okay, we are getting to the second part where we are right. Second is create a writing schedule. now writing daily is nothing but a dream everyone wants to write daily but no one really can unless you are stephen king right mm. so you have to create a writing schedule in a way that will help you feel relaxed and not feel like not make your writing feel like you don't know, want to but no please do not do that to yourself you need to love right you need to love each and every bit of it so get a writing schedule make it easy for follow make it very realistic what you need to do is start by assigning 3 days or 5 days a week for writing and you don't have to be writing for a very long time you can just write for half an hour or as my third point says you can set a goal of words in the writing community we writers tend to go by words word count now it might seem preposterous to you even but the thing is sticking to a word count goal is a lot more easier than sticking to a page because page varies kahan likh rahe ho tum kis pe likh rahe ho 
वगैरह वगैरह यू नो सो यू वॉन्ट टू एज स्टिक टू अ वर्ल्ड काउंट और अ पेज काउंट गोल और अ टाइम गोल इफ यू वॉन्ट यू नो मैं आधा घंटा लिखूंगी या मैं आधा घंटा लिखूंगा सो फॉर थ्री और फाइव टाइम्स अ वीक यू डू दैट ओके बिकॉज यू रियली नीड टू डू एंड यू नीड टू स्टिक टू ए सम डेज इट्स गन बी अ वॉक इन द पार्क यू विल बी एबल टू राइट लाइक दिस यू नो यू आर जस्ट एबल टू राइट योर फ्लो इज गुड यूर गेटिंग इंस्परेशन एंड यूर गेटिंग a good feeling about your writing so you are writing right so you can go ahead and write as much as you want but the thing is most of the days guys trust me on this most of the days you won't feel like it you'll be doubting yourself you'll be badgering yourself why are you even writing you'll be questioning your being about she even be a writer right? those are the days when you have to remember your daily word or page count goal and you need to stick to it writing is difficult and writing is a very lonely journey guys because you are there all alone with your pen and paper or your laptop and you have to do it alone so don't get caught in the web of self doubt again as i said Goat, give yourself some motivation, some much-needed motivation, and finish your word count goal. The days that you cannot write, at least make it to your daily word count goal or whatever goal you know. You need to stick to write into that. If you want, it's gonna be a disaster. Trust me. Now, many times you'll miss writing. That's okay. La- everyday life comes in the way you have festivals you have guests over at your place you're not able to write whatever, whatever whatever the thing is you can always make up for it by writing the next day you know it as i said it shouldn't be a punishment for you it should hi marji <laughs> it shouldn't be a punishment for you it should be something that you love so do it like you love it right and enjoy it for god's sake you don't have to be gloomy or you don't have to copy some other writers style or way of writing or their genre or whatever you know just write what you feel like writing just let it all out okay i'm going to tell you how <clears throat> now <coughs> you have a writing schedule now what we are going to do is <coughs> I'm so sorry. <clears throat> Now what we are going to do is put together the writing tools that you will need for writing. Now, I know this might sound frivolous to a lot of people, but the thing is <clears throat> preparing to write is kind of a ritual for all the writers to it most of the writers to it most of the writers who are doing do uh, doing good do it the thing is you need to do this ritual of putting things together getting your writing supplies and you know you just need to make yourself feel good about your writing and you need to put your mind not the conscious one because the conscious one already knows but the unconscious and the subconscious mind into the state you need to prep them that you are going to write then you be able to write nicely so what you need to do is find out a notebook it's not at all necessary that you need to go out and spend a lot of bucks on it search around the house you'll find some notebook If you are like me, you want to go out, you can go out, buy something. I buy a lot of notebooks and journals, and I don't know. I just buy them, even though I write on laptop. So, yeah, it just puts my mind in that state, and I need that sometimes. Sometimes I need to write physically in order to feel my writing. You know, so do whatever it takes to put your mind at ease, and in the <clears throat> frame. in the right frame you know 
or where you know you are going to write you just pump yourself up it's like a ritual you need to do it so gather your things get your pens get your notebook take your laptop and there you have all the tools now why while at it i would like to say that you do not need a fancy software to write a lot of people i know use scrivener it's very expensive uh, and it's a big put of a lot of you write you do not need to write you sorry you do not need fancy write for write written all three books using only two softwares that is one is microsoft word for mac and the other one is pages for mac that's it i just use them because you just have to write that's all you have to do right so why do you need fancy tools unless you are stupid and you cannot organize your own folders you actually don't need a scrivener like something like scrivener with very organized or whatever you know i love organizing my folders my way i like organizing them chapter wise character wise scene wise you know i know it takes a lot of effort to organize stuff so you do not need a fancy software for writing just open microsoft word and start penning it out what you can do though is select good font because font mainly depends on your state of mind many times i love using avner next for writing many times i like using times many times i like using courier courier new it just depends on my mood so i'm just sharing this so that you know you can use different fonts you can use different styles to make you feel good about your writing you know like uh, and after you are done writing like a page or two and if you really want to feel that writing that writing is so good that you're feeling so good about it just print it out see seeing your writing in print just gives you a kick that nothing else will if you really want to be a writer so do that after getting the tools ready the next step is sit your ass down and write simple <laughs> now is the time where you sit down and write and what do you want to write you can write anything anything at all if you feel like you have a story in mind you can write that if you feel like you want to write a poem sorry poem today you can write it because you know human brain is capable of a lot of emotions in one single day right so it all depends on how you feel it all depends on how uh, your emotional state is sometimes i write very dark things sometimes i write very bright things it all depends on how i'm feeling that day Starts when you don't know how to write, like where to begin, right? So I can give you some pointers. What you can do is <clears throat> write about one. You can also write about a conversation had with someone that holds the place in your. <laughs> so you can do that then if you heard someone conversing while you are at the grocery store or at the workplace or something then you can just pick that up and continue writing through it the thing is you need to write you know and in the initial stage it doesn't matter what you write the only thing that matters you write so it's okay if you want to get started then you can start simply journal writing you can just start a diary and write how your day went today and uh, what you felt how you felt if you're angry on someone then take it out on your uh, diary in your diary you know just write it all out if you're happy write it all down if you're sad write it all down if you're irritated write it all down if you are just simply angry on the world write it all down you know if you are into politics and don't like something someone mm? 
then you can write that down too because what happens is writing all those thoughts down is like killing two birds with a single stone okay i hate that analogy but i'm using it i don't i love birds and I don't kill okay so the thing then is okay you want me to speak louder okay, okay. <clears throat> The thing that happens is, where was I? When you write, first thing you're doing is you are getting your writing done. You are uh, making up for your daily goals, right? You're hitting your targets. You're feeling good about it. But the second thing it does, what it does to you is make you feel light. And if you feel this lightness, then trust me writing is for you even if you feel an ounce of lightness after writing one rant writing is for you you need writing writing is very therapeutic even if you do not become the next best writing will still help you in your daily life in your personal life in your men in, in, in nourishing your mental health to a very great extent so do it do it it's not necessary you can just simply write just because it pleases you to write right so do that now finding inspiration finding inspiration is the hardest part i guess because a lot of people complain about it i generally don't struggle with it because i've had a lot of experiences in my life that I wouldn't wish upon anyone and sadly that helps me in writing because when I'm I'm generally in a state of anger <laughs> so I have a lot to write when I'm angry uh, but also uh, traveling helps uh, going to different places really helps uh, taking walks helps like if today you do not have an inspiration you can just go out take a walk not a lockdown i'm talking about after the lockdown or in general circumstances you can take a walk the outside or you can go on the terrace you can go in the balcony just describe the scene in front of you right that's what i'm talking about you can write about anything anything absolutely anything a scene a description a letter to someone you don't like or a letter to someone you really like and a scene or whatever you know or what you can do is just think about a movie that you really like, but for some reason you didn't like the ending, say, you know. So you can just write an alternate end for it, or you can review. Reviewing is how I started writing. So, I read, so you then, that's how I started writing, you know. So you can start there, you can start reviewing whatever you like. You can review foods, you can review TV series, you can review movies. Anything to get you started. Okay. Then, many times there will be, you will be having this feeling like if it's raining outside and it's really pleasant and you're having some coffee or whatever, you know, and all of a sudden you just feel this unexplained emotions inside you where you are just so happy that you feel like oh my god i think i wish everyone can feel this that right there is a very strong writing inspiration that is an intuitive writing inspiration so get up first select quickly grab your laptop or your notebook and write down whatever it is you're feeling because that is going to be a very good piece of writing trust me and i'm sure you've already felt this kind of thing many times already and you would get the best out of this kind of thing you know yes movies are actually great for this thing Oh, the session, the session is going to end, I guess, in another 15, 20 minutes. I'm sorry, this is taking long. If you have some work, you can, uh, it's okay. You can just log out and go. Uh, I think the live sessions are actually stored.
upload on Facebook so you can watch them later on. Okay. Uh, anyway, you can just download these notes and you'll find each and everything in the in them. And you can later DM me, and uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. It's okay. Okay. The next thing in writing. Now, now we are writing, right? But now, in order to be consistent, what we really need is self acknowledgement. Many times I come across new and beginner writers who are so uh, skeptical of themselves. I have no idea what that is. Maybe it's that our brain, our own mind is our biggest enemy because people hesitate to call themselves writers. I have no idea why. Well, I am here to validate it. As human beings, we are used to getting validation for each and everything we do. We seek validation. That is our biggest problem, you know, as human beings. So if you want validation, I'll give you validation. If you write 200 to 300 words or one to two pages consistently for three to five times a week for two months, feel free, uh, like, feel free to call ourselves writers. You can add a writer to your Facebook profiles, to Instagram profiles, to all your profiles. You will call the writer because you are writing. Simple. Okay, the next thing is plotting. Many times, what happens is, you don't know what to write anymore. What are you going to do? Or sometimes you feel so good that you write what today I have written so much. What am I going to do next, you know? So it's a so plot. It is entirely okay to plot. There are a lot of writers who work that way. They plot and then they write. <clears throat> Plotting helps you prevent writer's block. Writer's block is the state where you can't write anymore. You can't think of anything to it. You don't like writing. So it will help prevent that. So you can always plot. On, especially on the days when you are feeling very good. Or especially on the days when you see so many things around you. You know like. You're in a fair or you at a pet store or whatever, you know, like something good happened or you came up with some movie or a book and you're getting these inspirations, you know, these ideas. So just grab a paper or a file on your computer and write down these ideas. Make in a separate diary or a separate file or document to write down ideas. So on the days when you don't know what to write anymore, you can refer to the ideas and you can write from them. That is the best way of writing. Because that way you're not even letting go of any idea because all ideas when you are beginning are important ideas because they'll help you write. And anything that helps you write is good. Now, the, the next thing that I want to stress upon is do not write for anyone else. The write only for yourself. If you're just trying to become a best selling author or you just want to write or because it's good and now start then don't self write. The thing is writing is very difficult. It's not as easy thing is and it takes a lot of uh, dedication and discipline and hard work to become a good writer. So before you begin, make sure that you really want to be a writer. Otherwise, you'll just be ending up wasting your time as well as others. So we are at the last part of our uh, webinar. I'm sorry I'm taking so much time, but there's just so much to share that I cannot cut it any more short. I'm all, I've already created shorts and I was literally uh, kicking myself for writing such short notes. Oh my god. Anyway, so the last part. Improving your writing. How you improve your writing? Now, I'll quickly share your writing. Now you've written something, right? Let it be. If you've written 200 words today or pages today or page today, whatever your uh, schedule 
allow you or whatever your goal is, personal goal. Let it be like that only. Do not edit, do not reverse, do not do anything right now. All those pieces, especially in the first two, you're just going to write a lot of crap. Like everyone. Uh, whenever I start writing again, I write a lot of crap and I just let it go. There's no point in uh, revising or editing those uh, crappy pieces, right? But you, you need to have all points. Because you never delete your writing. Never delete your writing. If you think it's a piece of crap, let it be a piece of crap. File it a piece of crap. It's okay. But let it be. Do not delete it. And always back up your Please. Okay. <clears throat> so, now there are going to be pieces that you feel like you... You just have this piece. This piece is good, right? Do not ignore that feeling. Please, for God's sake, start trusting your intuitions. Okay. So when you have that feeling, either print it out or just open it up, back it up first, then open it, then edit it. Try to make it better. Try to sound better. You know, uh, I am not asking you to use any word. Because fancy words while the writing is just crap. No one wants to see fancy words when the writing is not good. So first we'll concentrate on writing, then we are gonna concentrate on writing. First comes writing. Yes. So we are going to edit it and we are going to uh, basically better it by uh, rewriting some. Uh, second, my MacBook is out of charge. I thought it was already. Yes, it fits. Bag on. Let me just put the charger in. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, this is writing. Revising is basically. Add more thing to it to make it a full, full piece. You know, this is the first time when you write. Like, we basically, so basically, we call it uh, the first draft. So, the first draft is always crappy, you know. But when you do it in time, that the second half is a lot better because you add a lot of things in to much. Now, generally, I just give you an idea. It generally takes three to four drafts, three to four revises, and then two good edits to make it real. Now, when you are there, if you feel like this code, what should I do there? No, you know, you can submit it to blogs or websites, or you can create your own blog and publish it to that. I highly recommend starting your own writing blog because. Once you get into the groove of writing, you would want to eventually put your work out there for people to read it and get feedback from. So how are you going to do it? Because not all writers are free and you cannot just exchange always your pieces with other writers and ask them for feedbacks again and again, right? Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. So I highly recommend uh, starting a blog because that really helped me from experience and uh, <clears throat> That's how most of the writers I met. That's how I met most of the writer friends I know today. And we've had very really long standing friendships. And of this, uh, Marjorie Malone, uh, she is also an author, and I had the privilege of meeting her almost, I guess, five, six years back. Blogging. So, blogging is a very good platform to meet other writers, to share your writings, to get good feedbacks, to make good connections. Right. And uh, so I highly recommend it. Uh, starting a blog pretty easy. If you want, I can host another webinar on free, another free webinar on how to start your blog. Let me know. If you want. <clears throat> uh, okay, I'm just gonna cut my webinar short because it's all gone on so long, and I'm pretty sure people are not free enough long enough 
Yes, a piece of writing straight from heart. Yes. So I have these creative writing prompts and I also have some creative writing exercises for you guys. So I am going to leave a link. See, creative writing exercises. There are 10 creative writing exercises and I guess around 8 to 10 prompts. So you can complete these, finish them off and uh, send them to me as word files or back pages file uh, either of them is okay with me and i would love to have the plan to give you feedback about what how you are writing it how you do uh, things or how you should start uh, doing like how you grew what are your weak points what are your strengths and stuff like that that's if you want you don't want feedback you can obviously write and keep them with you it's okay Okay, now if you have <clears throat> questions, please post them now because I'll be answering the questions now. Okay, we can start this one. Make sure our writing ideas are not stolen by others if we share. Good question. Now, when you blog, there is a thing called Creative Commons License. Okay, if you want, I'll share the link to it uh, in the comments here. Uh, after like 20-15 minutes because I think I need some time to wrap this up. But there is a Creative Commons writing, uh, sorry, Creative Commons license. If you uh, copy and paste their code in your blog or just mention after each and every post, if you're posting it online, always mention in the end copyright like the C uh, that I can use C under the circle so that your name and the year you wrote it in. Always do that. And for your benefit, always save your writings because just in case if someone steals your good piece of writing and you have to go to court in order to fight against them, then these things can be shown as proof because your computer will show on what date it was taken. So Obviously, it was created before the person who stole it wrote it. So, um, it's actually secure that way. But generally, trust me, unless it's a really brilliant piece of writing, people don't copy it. It's your idea that you it. It's happened to me a lot of times. That's part of it. You really help. You can't just... Because it's like a creative thing. Anyone can say, yeah, this is my brain. So, okay, sorry, I think you do not understand Hindi. So, the, the thing is, uh, if you thought of it, okay. So, the best way to do it is through creative uh, the writing, creative lessons. I'll leave a link it in uh, the comments. You can copy their code and put in the bar widget of your blog, then it will be secured. Generally, if if you're going to post, they are anyway secured. If someone steals it or whatever in the court, you can always show your blog posts as proofs because they have the date of publishing. So, I hope that answered. Now, this is how we create our own blog. Creating your own blog is actually pretty easy. Uh, I highly recommend I started with Blogger platform, but uh, then I to WordPress. So, I highly suggest. WordPress or uh, platform for blogging because it's not very really to do it. Yeah. I didn't expect to so comprehensive and I'm going to hope with this one so I finish watching later and I don't think that's how I expect some prompts to be able to thank you. Thank you. Thank you for playwright ideas of the style was unique. Yes, everyone's ideas are also right. Writing style is something that you are going to develop after, I think, possibly writing for six, seven months. Then you'll, you will organically develop. It's not something you, uh, <clears throat> I'm forgetting the word, consciously do it. It is something that is organic, that it organically comes out of, out of you. You know, you can improve it. 
your things be very organically coming out of you. I'm just Sure. Suggestions and tips to trigger creativity in kids. Right. For kids, I think the best way to start is by reading them books, by giving them books to read, and then after you finish the book, this is uh, something I think I can imagine myself doing. So I'm gonna share that with you. Like, uh, uh, take the story of Cinderella. You know. Tell your kids what you didn't like about the story. That way they will understand that just because their stories doesn't mean they're perfect or they have to be like, like that, right? So you, you share first what you didn't like about the story. Like in Cinderella, I didn't like that she actually pretends has to come to rescue her. She couldn't think of a better way to get, rescue herself, right? So you talk about this to your child and I'm pretty sure the child will have their own ideas. If not, you sharing your thoughts will give them the idea of at least thinking of stories from other points of points of views, right? And then you give them the time and tell them that like, whatever, like however address them, and then you can say that, that this weekend I want to hear that if you can teach the story, how will it be? How how should it be? And I think that would be a great point of starting uh, your kids on the right foot. Uh, be creative, to be imaginative, right? And then if your kids are able to write and, you know, you can uh, actually give them some prompts like I have given you in these notes. You can give them prompts like tell them about, I think we can write this to them, you know, because that is going to encourage them. Remember, kids do what you are going to do. Remember that. So, uh, you can write these together. Like, you can come up with a funny story. And then you can ask your kid to add details. Uh, what kind of hat does he have? Or he can have? Or what kind of clothes does he wear? You know, that's how the mind gets triggered. That's what you do for kids. Uh, to do creativity in kids. I hope this answered your question. If not, just, uh, keep on commenting. Them. Oh, majority writing COVID 19 is oh my, a great idea, and I would love to it. Please, to me, uh, it would be my privilege to uh, read it. Okay, I think I try to speak louder. Yes, short stories can be written in fiction line, but that's not what they are called. They are actually called micro fiction. Problem. You're getting the problem with the instant. <laughs> no one has teach us what to call what. That's why I said the terminologies. I hope now you don't feel like I wasted your time with the terminologies, but you but like every Master's handwritten draft. Yes, Master's handwritten draft, but we live in a digital, uh, uh, digital age and very few people now write with hand and I am, I like writing writing with my hand, but I suggest writing on a laptop or a desktop because after you read your manuscript, you get it edited. You have to submit it, you have to make a lot of changes, you have to make your own revisions first of all. And that, that is actually not at all possible or is very difficult in handwritten draft. So, manuscript can be a digitally written draft. Manuscript is just a completed story. But that is not polished. So, anything in manuscript, it doesn't have to be necessarily handwritten. But you and if you are really uh, bent towards that kind of thing, you can do it.
yes the list uh, the list that i read is literally is on literary devices it's of literary elements and of literary okay hope not missing any questions let's see thanks a lot marjo ah uh, thanks a lot marjo i'm sorry thanks a lot marjo for watching it it was a great kick for me as well even i'm feeling inspired to write my story now <laughs> yeah i hope you guys enjoyed it just as a last thing uh, as i said earlier i am going to be posting about uh, the prompts and etc what i have now is basically due to the acute and very nagging lack of writing teacher and writing courses creative writing courses creative writing teachers in india i have, i have decided to provide tuitions i just sound weird but i have started like i've decided to provide tuitions for writing these are courses i'm going to provide if anyone's interested they are going to be skype sessions uh provided for thrice a week uh the sessions Start at a minimum, so basically, I'm just interested in sharing stuff. So, so okay. Ah, uh, thank you for sharing such a good comment. Ah, uh, sure, sure, sure. We are anyway ending. I'll be posting the link for the notes, so you can download the prompt notes from there, and uh, get it to me one. Okay. So the thing is, I will be providing following tuitions, fiction writing one on one, in which. I'll be teaching you how to write fiction. Now these students are classes are first class one on one Skype sessions. So these are something that I really wish made it if someone would have started so that I would have even gotten them, gotten a chance to have them. But sadly, there's no one doing it, so I am starting to do it. So fiction writing one on one. I'll be giving you coaching for fiction writing, and I'll be giving you a lot of assignments exercises notes and you'll receive feedback from me because you'll submit the assignments to me second one is novel writing 101 even if you just have an idea and want to get started i'll help you finish your manuscript and even if you are in the middle of a manuscript doesn't matter because the sessions are going to depend on where you are in your project not on where i say it is you know so you can enroll for it or you can enroll for completing your manuscript this is for the authors writers who are uh, middle way or stuck in their manuscript fiction writing teens teenagers how to write how to get started in writing how to train their brains to think like a writer and to enhance their imagination so this is for parents please don't force your kids to <coughs> take these questions as the kid really wants to I'm sorry. Unless the kids, kid, kid really wants to attend our sessions. The next one is blog writing 101. If you want to learn how to write blog, because I've been blogging for the last six years, so I have a very big, like I have a huge experience in blogging. So you can take those classes as well. They're total work. Then manuscript bullshit. The details are obviously you can find on my website. I am critic, so if you have a manuscript you want to get looked at before submitting to a publishing house, and send it to me, and I'll give you a quote. I first try to sample sample to T, then you can decide for yourself. Okay, so <coughs> the last bit, if you enroll in my classes, they are going to be. Confidential. Why? Because most of the writers don't like to share their writings with anyone, so they are going to be confidential. I'm not going to be sharing the writings with anyone. I'm already. I already work with writers who have been published yet, and I do not speak a squawk about them anywhere. Obviously, I'm very professional. Don't worry. I'm on Fiverr as well. I am a manuscript there as well, so I do that too. And if you are in Pune, then I really don't. Mind in personal class at my home at my place here. 
but if I just write Pune, I can't visit my place at least for the next one month till the lockdown is there. I'll be more than happy to take Skype tuition sessions. Uh, if you want details on any of these classes, then you can just email me. Or if you want, or if you have some questions related to anything that I said today, or if you really need any help, you can always email me at kradinadrajgmail.com. It's given in my books. I'll be sharing it here as well. I'll be sharing all my links so you can connect anywhere. You can even connect with me on my Facebook through DMs. I'm sorry I haven't to all DMs yet. There's just so much to do these days. But I will reply. It takes me some time to reply because I'm terribly behind in replying to emails as well. But I do reply. Give me a week. Thanks a lot to each and and everyone listening to me for so long, I'm sorry, I actually thought it would just be hard to contain myself right now. You don't know that yet. So I love writing. Thanks a lot for watching. Harsh, thanks a lot for all the movies, all the uh, motivation and the cheer. I really love you. He's my little brother. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot, Vishal, for helping me arrange this and for serving me such amazing and delicious breakfast so that I could just do it today nicely. I love him so much. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for all the motivation and encouragement. And thanks a lot guys for spending so much time. I'm really, really grateful to have met you all. I'm so happy to see that so many people are interested in writing and I really hope that you guys write. Writing you guys is really therapeutic at least you for me. So do think the right way. We hope you station. Please don't forget to give a little uh, short feed so that I can uh, put it on my website for others. Please do that. Visit us. I hope you're doing good. And all the best for writing. See you in the DM and you want to always hear. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.